Welcome to DHIS2 training video. In this video, I will demonstrate to you how to enter data into an data entry form. As we did in the earlier video, you have to first select the relevant org unit for the data entry process. In this case, I will be selecting the PHM Paneler as my preferred org unit. Once the org unit appears in the organizational unit box, you have to select the data set, in this case, the PHM's monthly return. Following which, you will be selecting the period on which you will be entering data. For demonstration purpose, I will be selecting October 2011 as my preferred period. Once I select the period, you will notice the data entry form. Once you have the data entry screen, you can browse downwards in order to make an appropriate entry. Or, if you are planning on entering data from the beginning, you start from the first box. You can move the mouse pointer over the first box and click. You will be noticing that the cursor appears on the first box and starts blinking. In relation to each of these boxes, you should know you will be entering data values, either text, numbers, dates, or any other format that is allowed. If you want to see what was the previous entries to this same field, you just double click on top of this box. Then you'll be shown a screen which demonstrates the averages of the last few entries. In this chart, you can see the numbers that have been already entered up to October 2011. In the top, you will notice that there is a box for the maximum limit, minimum limit and the average. In this field, the average entry is 901.3. However, there is no maximum or minimum limit defined for this field. Following looking at this box, you can return back to the data entry form by pressing the close button. Once back in the data entry form, you can type a number. In this case, I'll be typing 855. After typing the number, you can press the tap button to move to the next box. You will notice that the box which already has the value appears in green. This means the number conforms to the minimum and the maximum values valid for that particular field. However, since we have not defined any value for this field, any number that you enter will be taken in as valid. Similarly, you can move from one field to another by pressing the tab key. If you want to move back, you have to press Shift Tab. This will allow you to jump from one field to another upwards. Let me show you what happens if you enter an invalid entry. I will set the minimum and the maximum range for a particular field for the validation to occur. For instance, I will double click on the new registrations box and in the details screen I will put 20 as the maximum limit and 5 as the minimum. Although these are arbitrary values, your system administrator will define the exact value for any particular field. Please note that these fields cannot be altered if you do not have the administrator authority. Following setting the maximum and the minimum values at 20 and 5, I will return back to the data entry form by pressing the close button. Once returned, I will now enter a false value. In this case, I will say the number of new registrations as 30, which is more than the maximum limit allowed. When I press the tab key to move to the next field, you will notice a message saying, the value of the following data element is greater than the maximum accepted value. 
Therefore, it is warning us that the value that I have entered is not a valid amount. If you acknowledge it as say OK, you will notice that particular data field appearing in orange. That means it is indicating to us that there is a wrong value being entered into that field. However, it will not prevent us from entering that data into that particular field. If we want, we can correct it by just clicking on that particular box and erasing the content which should follow by a correct entry. In this case, I will type 10. Now when I press the tab key, it will take in as a valid amount. Similarly, I can fill the rest of the data field and move downwards. At any point, the PHM need not fill all the fields at the same time. It is possible to enter data even within few days. However, once you complete the entire form correctly, you can press the complete button to say that this data entry form is a complete form. The usefulness of that is when the data analysis is done, it will do so using the completed data forms. At the same time, if you press the run validation button, the entire data set will be analyzed and you will be notified of any invalid. Thus, for instance, if I have entered an invalid value for the previous screen, such as 25, When I run the validation, it will notify me that the data entry screen has validation errors. Please correct these before proceeding. And it will display the data element which has the error, the minimum and the maximum value that is desired, and the value that I have entered. This will be a useful tool to analyze and validate the data in a data set. Now I can close this window and go back to the data entry screen to correct the invalid value. In this case, I will change it back as 10. We'll discuss more about the validation rules in our next video. If you want to change the data set and enter different set of values, you can do so by selecting the appropriate data set or a different period. If you press the next or the previous button, that means that you will be taken to the previous year or the next year of the data set. For instance, if I press previous, you will now get months belonging to 2010. If I say next, then you will see all the months belonging to 2011. If you want to enter data into September data entry form, you can do so by just clicking on that option. As the September data element is already being set, you will see a completed list. Now you have completed the fourth task of DHIS2 training, which is to enter data into the data entry form correctly. If you have any queries, please post them into the online discussion forum or ask from your local DHIS advisor.